Because I'm speaking English, I call this country Germany. Although if I were to speak Spanish, I would call it Alemania, which is surprisingly different to the Italian Germania, and then incredibly different once again to the Frisian Duitsland, which sounds more like the Dutch name for Germany, which is Duitsland, which is then completely different to the Polish name for the country, Niemcy, and the Finnish name for the country, Saxa, whereas the Germans themselves call it Deutschland. Now why on earth are there so many different variations that seemingly aren't at all related for the same country? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. This reference to a word sounding like the English noun Germany comes from Latin and the Romans, when Julius Caesar, known to us as Julius Caesar, called the land inhabited by certain tribes Germania. Now, many of these tribes will become important later on, and it's because of the later peoples in England, after the Tudors, for example, studying this period, the Roman period, and the Germanic tribes, some of whom obviously later on would come to Britain in the form of the Anglo-Saxons, Jutes and Frisians, and this is why in English we call it Germany, which goes back to the Latin Germania. Now an interesting point is that before the Tudor period, before the sort of early 16th century, people in England were calling Germany, or the area of Germany, because remember Germany wasn't a country until 1871, the unification of uh, mainly Prussia and Austria and other areas that were German speaking. People in England at the time were calling it Almain or Alman, and that sounds a lot more like the French Allemagne, which is the French name for Germany, which is again more related to the Spanish name. Now where does Allemagne and Alemania in Spanish come from? Well, that comes from another tribe which was found in Germany called the Alemanni. And this tribe was a big nuisance for the Romans at the time. And you can see that this one is the reason why you have some of the Romance names apart from Italian, of course, which is Germania. Now, where does the very nice sounding Finnish noun for Germany come from, which is Saxa? Well, that one, as you might have guessed, comes from the tribe called the Saxons. And this, as I said, they also went to um, England at a certain point as well as parts of northern France uh, there are Saxons in the Netherlands as well as Germany and that's where we get Saxa from now the Polish one if you remember was incredibly different Niemcy and I'm probably butchering the Polish but I think it's impossible to actually pronounce Polish correctly this is my theory but anyway the idea behind this is that it comes from a proto-slavic word which I'm not going to try and pronounce which meant something along the lines of mute and mute not as in that they can't speak but mute as in foreigner now you might think there's not really much of a connection there but the idea is that they were essentially the people who spoke differently to us, so people who didn't speak a Slavic language. And the Germanic tribes spoke a Proto-Germanic language or dialect, which is why the Slavs, the Proto-Slavs, would be calling them those who speak a different language. Nailed it. But how do we go from that to the version used by the Dutch and the Frisians, as well as, of course, the Germans themselves? Well, this comes back to a Proto-Germanic word, which is Theodisk, and this is a word that meant something like people, or Volk is the German term of Volk in Dutch, which is used, and this eventually would develop into Deutsch after several changes and shifts in how things were pronounced. And of course, Deutsch is used as in German as German, um, so the Deutsche Sprache is the German language, das Deutsches Volk is, um, they are the German people. And of course then Deutschland, which was a concept that had been going around sort of the early 19th century after Napoleon and after things had been really shifted around the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, or the Austrian Emperor at the time had been deposed by Napoleon in 1806. And then you have the slow process towards a unification, which was finally accomplished under the Prussians and Bismarck in 1871. And of course then Deutschland, is a land for the Germans, the country of the Germans. The Germans being, obviously it wasn't a country beforehand, but they were united under the fact that they spoke German. Now an interesting thing is, and some people do get mixed up between Deutschland because they think Deutschland, that's Dutchland, so that's the Netherlands, but that's not actually the case. Although an interesting point is that Dutch and Deutsch both come from a similar root. In Middle Dutch you have Dietzk, which is still actually used for a kind of pan Netherlandish um, ideology, which is uh, Dietzland, which is like this, essentially all the Dutch-speaking historical areas. Um, 
But then you have obviously the difference where one developed into Dutch, which is now used obviously for inhabitants of the Netherlands and the language, and the other developed into Deutsch, which is obviously in German for German in that sense. And the reason this came about was because the English and the Dutch, they were trading rivals for a large part of, well, essentially the 15th, the 16th, the 17th centuries. They were large trading rivals. And so the people in England who had kind of just lumped everyone on that side of the continent together especially this was before germany was a country they then needed to distinguish between the ones living further inland who weren't really an issue and those pesky tall blonde people who were deciding to win all the nice trading spots around the east indies who they then called the dutch now after a while they stopped calling both the germans who we now call germans and the Dutch from the Netherlands, Dutch in England, although in the United States this lasted a while longer. So in the American Civil War, you see a lot of regiments called Dutch regiments, even though these were actually German regiments. And as well, you have the language which is spoken by um, various, I believe, Mennonite groups in the United States on the East Coast, who speak a language which they call Pennsylvania Dutch, although this is actually a dialect of German rather than Dutch. But in America, the use of Dutch as being both from the Netherlands and German remained a bit longer which is why you get that now to sum up essentially we have the germany is in uh, english is related to the italian germania which then goes back to the romans and julius caesar calling the tribes who were possibly called the germani who lived along the rhine area and then we have the fact that the french and the spanish and other romance languages apart from italian call them something like alemania or allemand because of this tribe called the alemanni and an interesting point is that it might be because these are the people they interacted with, the Alemanni being the ones who probably crossed into Gaul and raided Gaul at several stages and, of course, being along the border with France, as well as the people calling them Saxa, so the Finns, the Estonians, the Hungarians, they all speak related languages. They were the ones who went east as well, things um, like with some of the Holy Orders, the um, Teutonic Knights, that kind of thing. A lot of them were Saxons, Saxon Dukes at the time who went out uh, on crusade over there so that might be why they've come to associate the germans with the saxons and then of course the poles and various other slavic nations who called them the the mutes or those who can't speak because they were foreigners so thank you very much for watching that is essentially why germany has so many different names in different languages so i've been history with hill but if you enjoyed this then don't forget to like leave a comment if you'd like to know anything else or add more information and don't forget to subscribe thanks very much and i will see you all again very soon